This video is how to clean out your stove when you've had a high burn. You've been running it for days on end and uh, it's down to where it's starting to get full. This isn't quite as full. This is about, believe it or not, this has been running wide open for five days and that's pretty much all the ashes I've got. And that's because this is a, I've modified this stove. It's high efficiency stove. It's up around 94%, believe it or not. And uh, what you need to do in a case like this is you've been running at a high burn rate but you want to be able to clean out the ashes, but there's still a lot of uh, usable charcoal in here, and uh, you can see the glowing embers in here as well. That'll help you get started back up. The thing of it is, is that you don't want to throw all that out, even if it was minimal. Um, charcoal has the, the heat capacity of four times the wood you have in it if it was oak. So basically charcoal has four times the heat value of oak, uh, so you want to save that. And the, the, the way I've come up with doing that is you basically use a griddle, a griddle skillet that has holes in it, Basically what you do is you just go ahead and shovel the charcoal, glowing embers and all, into the skillet. And you even do this when it has a lot less burn in here than this has. Because a small amount of charcoal, once you get it burned again, is really going to help pull this stove back up. Because, you know, while you're doing this, you're on supplemental heat if it's like, you know, 10 degrees outside, 10 degrees or minus 10 degrees. So you want to try to minimize your downtime, but you still need to get these ashes out of here and you're not really happy about dragging a whole bucket full of ashes out into your garage. Help, maybe it might help keep your garage warm if you're worried about that, but it's not doing you any good in the house. What you do is load up your griddle skillet and shake it down. Just kind of use a vibratory motion, blah, 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 blah. get it down there. And what you've been doing over here when you've been shoveling to one side, shoveling out, is you're making a place for these. So you use kind of a, a gold miner's kind of a shuckle on them, skillet and just shuck those over there. Put your skillet back in place. Go ahead and start digging under it a little bit. Okay. You can go ahead and shut that over there. Keep doing this and get over in here. Now here's the ashes that you can go ahead and put in your bucket. Like I said, I'm not, this isn't completely full. So I'm not really worried about this particular instance, this makes a good video for how to do it. Usually I let them get almost too high. But one thing about burning the wood, you want to keep it off the bottom. So you have to maintain, you know, the or keep the level of the ashes down, which means you have to change them an awful lot. Which is why it helps when you have a really high efficient wood stove. Um, you have to do this operation a little bit less. Shuck them out. I'm oh, sorry. Screen them out, chuck them over, just keep doing this until you're all the way back. It's not a very precise thing. You don't have to get it like ob obviously, you know, absolute. Once you get down to a certain level, go ahead and now you come down in here, scrape all these, put them in your bucket. Set this grill at skittle off to the side where it's not going to be a problem. Go ahead and clean the rest of your ashes out here. Good to wear gloves, but I've been doing this for so long, I still got a good sense for not burning myself. Now, what you want to do is go ahead and move these ashes in the middle and across. And then try to rake some of the hot ones to the top. The best burn configuration to get a wood stove started after you've had to drop all the ashes out is kind of a use a half moon shaped piece of wood that's split. So you got kind of a face to face two wedges of wood, which is made out of a half moon piece. So I will put my gloves on for this. And if you want to, you can peek these up in the middle so that, you know, if you're off the bottom a little bit, which is, which is what you want to do, you want to be able to get off the bottom, get that air under the wood, get a good burn. You can bring those up so they kiss the wood in the middle and you see what I'm talking about. So you can get it going in. Kind of push the left. You can get underneath the one side, push the ashes up a little bit, let it sit until it starts to smoke. As everybody knows, it's the smoke that burns, not the wood. So once you see the smoke starting, 
Now obviously we've had to sit in here. If you're really anxious, you can get in here, strike a flame to it. And what we got here between these two pieces of wood, if you can see, makes a nice chimney effect through here. And this is what, this is one of the easiest configurations to get going is this face to face. If you've got two wedge shaped pieces of wood, just face them off in the middle with the coals underneath. Next thing you know, you got a rip roaring fire underneath the, the bottom faces, which is going to really pipe up through this middle. Once it gets started through this middle, then uh, what you need to do is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but close the door, let these pieces catch up in the middle a little bit, let them burn up in the center. And I've got this a little bit too close in the center, they're pinched off. Close it, let the wood, I mean, let the fire go up in the, the uh, two faces of the two vertical facing pieces. Let that get started and then open it again. Let it burn up. Shut it, let it get started some more. Let it burn up. Let it get started some more, shut it back down. So you do this several times, and before you know it, you got a nice vertical flame tornado running up through the middle of these pieces. Just some more information. This is the best configuration you can have for starting up a coal stove, or as you know we have here, cleaned it out, saved the charcoal, and have, are trying to get it started again. In this configuration, what you have is you've got these uh, half moon shapes split, and it's over the bed of coals that you had before, or your, your kindling if you're trying to start it back up. And you've got this rising flame column between the two vertical faces of the, the two quarters you have. There's a lot going on in here, obviously. Some of it is very technical. Uh, there is obviously the chimney effect, where you've got the gas vaporizing from the, the superheated wood, which is combining with the air to burn, and that expands. Now you've got more pressure in that gap, which makes it rise faster, and then you have this process continuing all the way up that gap. So how you're, this is how you have your your chimney effect. There's also something else going on in here, which makes this a very important configuration for when you're starting up a cold stove. Is if you notice on the sides, the left and the right far sides, they're not burning very well yet. This center is really hot, and this is a hot configuration. This configuration will get you up and started on a really cold stove because the heat is ricocheting back and forth between these two faces. It's kind of like a heat pinball machine. The thing of it is, is it's multiplying as it goes up. One side emits heat in the form of radiation. That shines over like a flashlight to the other side. The other side, basically, because of the rules of thermodynamics, has to absorb that heat. Well, it's making heat of its own. It really didn't need that extra heat. So it increases the temperature on that side, which increases the gas and the subsequent flame, which increases the heat that's actually broadcast like a flashlight back to the other side where it originally came from. So now you get this multiplying effect. So every time heat gets sent back and forth, it gets multiplied. So this, in addition to the chimney effect, is also another reason why this is the best configuration. And this will start a cold stove up faster than you can imagine, uh, considering that you know on either side of this, we still have not a lot of burning going on on the right and left sides. So this will heat up your heat tubes if you have a configuration like this. This will this will rush around and actually heat up the stovetop to create that temperature differential from the, the stovetop to you know the bottom of the stove, which is actually responsible for your draft. And once you get your draft going, now you've got a process where you've had this heat chimney that's being driven by a draft, which even makes it go faster. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna actually get the whole piece burning once that wood comes up to temperature. At the point where you've really got a hot burn and you shut it down uh, to minimize the, the, the flow, what you've got is uh, what they call in, in engineering um, physics, it's a heat transfer equation. To maximize the heat transfer in a, in a stove like this, you need to have a good temperature differential, which is the hot flame and the colder stovetop. And you've also got an extended time that that, that gas from that flame is actually touching the stovetop. The more time it gets to touch the stovetop as it passes through the stove, the more heat it can transfer into the stove and thus into the room. So that equation is um, Q equals MC delta T. So if you have a hot, slow burning stove, you've got maximum efficiency and that's what you want. This configuration is the best way to get you there.